Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, say you're in for something special. You're yes. in for something special. I can't hear you. You're in for something special. Shake somebody next to you, say you're in for something special. You're in for something special. Hallelujah. Find somebody Hallelujah. else, say you're in for something special. You're in for something special. Listen to me. Our God is a good God. Amen. And he's a God not only of good things, yes. but he's a God of surprises. Amen, yes. amen. May the Lord Jesus surprise you. I receive it, yes. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I'm, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'll let you in on a little secret. Touch your neighbor, say, quenching your spirit. Quenching your spirit. I can't hear you. Quenching your spirit. Touch somebody and tell them, quenching your spirit. Quenching your spirit. What does it mean to quench your spirit? Let me explain to you. You see, to quench the spirit, this is a general term. This one usually means about God's own spirit. But you can also quench your own spirit. You can 100% quench your own spirit. You see, whenever your spirit leaps for God, it expects your soul and your body to go along. The moment your soul and your body don't go along, you will frustrate your own spirit and your spirit will not be able to pull on God. You don't pull on God just with your mouth or with your lips, or with your tongue. God wants every fiber of your being to call on him. Calling on God. Wait, wait, don't clap yet. So that when you clap, you clap for real. God expects every inch of you, both spiritual and physical, both material and immaterial, to completely cry for him when this aligns is when the presence the blessing and the manifest power of god comes through you see the reason why every time when i come out you see me going on my knees it's not because i am trying to impress anybody i am making sure that my physical body is never going to be in the way to quench my spirit So when I come before God, I surrender the flesh, I put him down. Remember, your your posture is to be on your knees. Even while you're standing up, you're still on your knees. You remind yourself that I am here because only God can do this. You see, when God sent us to Atlanta and and we went and and, and served the people of God there, the reason why whenever we pray or we do something, The presence of God is always shocking. It's because there is no resistance anywhere. God is not resisted by the devil. God is resisted by you. Notice when God wants to change anything he can. But when it comes to a man, man has to open his heart. Yes. But God just needs one man to say yes. Amen. 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 Let's go. So good. I thought I was talking to that one man. Amen. God just needs one person, one person that will respond. Anywhere we go, you know, the reason why when I travel, I travel with my sons and the whole team is because I know once we start really ministering, to be honest with you, in Atlanta, I didn't even really do what I wanted to do, but God did what needed to be done. Every time it's always the same effect. The people we go to are shocked. They don't know what to do. They're like... Uh, dear, the, or, or, you know, standing uh, on, is it headlights? Yeah, like, huh? headlights. you know, shocked. It's because the tangible presence of God is undeniable. If you want God to manifest in your life, stop resisting him. Some of you think you're not resisting him because you say you love Jesus. But when they say clap for the Lord, you are tired. Your body is tired indeed. But you still have enough energy to clap. But you clap like this. And you say, God knows my heart. What, did the, the, what, what, what does the scripture say? Love your God with what? All your... Uh-huh. All, 
all your the bible goes as far as to say with all your might even the strength in your body if it is not spent in glorifying him you haven't I don't think you heard me. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Shh. The lesson hasn't entered you yet because you're still struggling to clap. You see, when we do fighting, right? Like I have, I have my brothers here, they fight. Zoe is not in the house, Zoe is somewhere. But anyone that fights knows that one of the main things they tell you is everything you do, do it with intent. Yes. Even if you're shadow boxing, you shadow box as if somebody is before you. Everything must be done with everything. If you don't put anything in it, you are playing games. So God is telling you this. Love me. Not only with your heart. So anybody who tells you God knows my heart, but their body is doing something else, know that they don't know him. So people confuse when God says, when the Bible says God is looking at your heart. They think that God doesn't care about what is external. That is not true. They'll be busy doing other things and then you tell them, what are you doing? God knows my heart. Well, your heart is manifest. What does the Bible say? Out of the good treasures of a good man, he brings out good things, which is his heart. And out of what? Evil treasures of their hearts, they also bring what? Evil things. If what you're bringing out is evil, God knows your heart and your heart is evil. And evil to God is not that you insulted, you curse somebody. It is when he has given you life. There is somebody on life support that wishes, Lord, when you bring me back, Amen. I will clap my hands. Amen. I will celebrate you. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you are in church, but your clapping is... God looks at you and says, you are evil. God looks at you and says, you are what? Evil. How can I give you life? And your first reaction is you clap for me like that. You have the strength to do so. You have the energy to do so. The reason why you have no capacity to receive from God is because you have not made your whole being available. You don't increase your capacity by praying. You make room for God by using everything you have. Then God can add on you. You see, when you work out, eh, you don't work out. And You know, athletes, wave your hands if you've played any serious sports. Okay, speed kills, I see you. <laughs> you know that the workout really begins when you're getting tired. Yeah. I think Muhammad Ali said he never counted abs until they started hurting. When they start hurting, one, two. When you get to your end and you push beyond that, that's how you increase capacity. So you want demons to be afraid of you, but this is how you clap for God. Mm. Come on. Come on. But when it comes to financial blessing is coming. Amen. Come on. Ah, God looks at you and says, wow, you love money more than me. <laughs> Financial blessing. <laughs> money in your bank. Amen. <laughs> Give God everything. <laughs> yes, Lord. It's good. Repent. Amen. I repent. Touch your neighbor, say repent. Repent. No, find another neighbor, say repent. Repent. If there's a camera next to you, look at the ones that are online, say repent. Repent. Jesus wants everything. Look at your neighbor, say Jesus wants everything. Jesus wants everything. I can't hear you. Jesus wants everything. Look at your neighbor say Jesus wants everything. Jesus wants everything. He doesn't like leftovers. He doesn't like leftovers. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles quickly. Romans chapter 8 from verse 18 to 22. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 to 22. Can we all read it together? One, two, three. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh -huh. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Uh -huh. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Uh -huh. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Now, I want you to read verse 18 and verse 22 only. There are two things I want you to underline there. Let's start from verse 18. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time underline suffering worthy. underline suffering underline suffering underline suffering verse 22 for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now underline pain groaning and travailing If you have done that, put your right hand on your head. Say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of understanding. Father, give me the spirit of understanding. May I know your ways. May I know your ways. May I understand your ways. May I understand your ways. Lead me in all truth. Lead me in all truth. I want your truth. I want your truth. Not my own. Not my own. Your understanding. Your understanding. Not my own. Not my own. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, say, you can sit, but don't sit on your mouth. You can sit, but, but don't, don't sit, sit on, on your mouth. mouth. Amen. 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 Now, I want you to understand something, children of God. As long as you are born into this world, suffering will always be there. Being a child of God does not mean that suffering will not be there. It does not mean that groaning and travailing will not be there. It does not mean that pain will not be there. I'll say that again. Being a child of God does not mean you will not be a man or a woman that will go through pain, that will not go through suffering. The point of suffering has always to produce pain. Nothing in life can be achieved unless pain is involved. When your parents gave birth to you, your mother was crying in pain. When contractions came, she was in pain. When you are coming out of her, there was pain. When you are growing up, there is uh, growing pains. When te you're teething, it is painful. Everything about every stage of life is embraced by pain. Pain is nature. Pain is a must. But there is a reason why God constituted pain to be part of our reality. This is why today I'm going to teach you how to use your pain. Amen. Amen. Uh, some people don't want to clap. Touch your neighbor, say using your pain. Using your pain. Now you have to understand that God in all wisdom, everything that he did was intentional. There is nothing that God has ever done by accident. Nothing is an experiment. Everything is absolutely intentional. Every
everything is absolutely what? Intentional. I can't hear you. Intentional. I think you can be louder than that. Intentional. Yes, don't sit on your mouth. <laughs> everything about God is intentional, 100%. Now, when it comes to receiving anything from God, you will notice one of the ways and major pay, uh, ways is always that pain always has to play a part in producing the best that God has. Now, being offended is different than being in pain. Because to be offended is to self-inflict pain. It doesn't count. That is what the Bible says, woe to what? The offender and the what? Offended. Just because somebody did something wrong to you, it doesn't mean because you're offended, you're on the right. There is a lot of people in church that are busy with, that person did this to me. I can't believe they did that to me. One thing that I thank God is that me, I was delivered for them from those things years ago. Amen. In fact, I don't remember any time that I was ever like that. Because you do this, I'm going to... It's demonic because you are misusing an opportunity that could have been life-changing for you because you don't understand a very profound reality about spiritual life. The interaction with God, with humanity, was not established simply because of love. Where there is love, there is always pain. Because love is not emotional. Love is a, is a verb. Against everything that you feel, love is an act that aligns with the nature and the person of God. Yes. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 that God was grieved. God was hurt. When he saw what humanity has become, the Bible says that he was hurt to his heart. God was in pain that he was sorry he ever made man. He said, I will wipe man from the face of the earth because he is only dust. But because God is love, he still saved mankind. So even though man was bad, God still found a man in order to sustain man. So even in God's greatest pain, he devises the most glorious act that will show that God is love. Even in his pain, God always produces what will give life because God is a life-giving spirit. So when God wanted to re-establish his relationship with man, God did something very interesting. He did not just snap his finger like Thanos and everything that was bad was gone. God took his own son, afflicted him with pain, put him on the cross and killed him. Teach him. And by killing him, he said, I love you. The greatest transaction in the spirit is not singing, is not giving, it is not worshiping, it is doing those things while you are in pain. So good. I'm talking to the wrong people. Good. The Bible says this about Job. It says Job was minding his own business in his house. Every worst news you can think of came down on that man that day. They came to him, they said, ah, Your children are dead. Your wealth is gone. Some of you, you just get fired. You feel like the world has ended. I, I don't even know. <clears throat> Everything. I, I just, I just. Job is hanging, chilling. I don't know why my mic is going in and out. Can we fix that, please? Job is 
minding his business he came your children are dead your wealth is dead every yet everyone else that was around his children were not touched but the children died the wealth is gone everything that was his gone the bible says job looked at himself and said hey naked i came from my mother's womb naked i will go back Praise be the name of the Lord. He bowed down and he began to worship God. And the Bible says in all these things, Job never sinned or blamed God. When the Bible begins, it says that Job was a righteous man. He was a good man. But the only time the Bible counts his worship is the day that he was in pain. I'm going to tell you something. Many of you have never worshipped God. You think you have, but you haven't. That's why you, you, when you worship God, you do it based on the songs you love. Ooh, I'm feeling that song. Ooh. You're still in a carnal state. Because worship has nothing to do with what you're feeling. has everything to do with who God is. When that realization of who God is, it doesn't matter what it is, you will worship him because you know. Amen. Amen. But if you still have to, ooh, that's my song, then it's not, then who, are you really singing to God or are you singing to yourself? Are, are you listening to me? Yes. Your greatest miracle will not appear when you're doing well. Your greatest deliverance will not show up when everything has lined up. The currency of the spirit is pain. Every one of you has gone through pain. Every one of you has gone through hurt. Jesus is on the cross. Nailed to the cross. Jesus is dying. It's just a matter of time. The Pharisees come. So you are saying you are the son of God. Show us that you are the son of God. Save yourself. Where are all those miracles? Where are all these things? In the midst of all that, Jesus looked up, said, Dad, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. That the Roman soldier looked at them and said, you are insulting him. You are mocking him. But he is still praying for you. What did Jesus just prove? Through his pain, he still proved that I am a child of God. Amen. Amen. Many of you, when you are in pain... Your first line is, don't, don't be fooled. I may be a Christian right now, but don't, I still got these hands though. The streets still know. Notice, you start remembering your past. That you claim you are saved. Let me talk to people who are real. Ah, Let me find some people that want to be real. No, no, you're right. Okay, first step on. Let me talk to people that want to be real. Yes. Now, don't play with me. You don't know me like that. Ah, man of God, woman of God. You even sleep up and you start throwing alphabets out. So, whew, they got me worked up. You just failed the test because in your time of pain, for God to give you more grace, you should have lifted up your hands and say, Father, I feel everything that they have said, Amen. but I forgive them. Amen. Forgive them ah, also. Teaching. Teaching they good. don't know what they are doing. Yeah. They have no idea what they are saying. They don't know any better. Lord, have mercy on them. And have mercy on me also. Because once upon a time, I was like that. Increase my capacity, oh God. Amen. You're helping us. You're helping. 
You are not permitted to even pray for capacity until you get to that point. Are, are you listening to me? Yes. This is how it looks like when God wants to bless you. First Samuel chapter 1 from verse 3. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of his host in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hopni and uh, that one, the priests of the Lord were there. <laughs> Verse 4. <laughs> My excuse, I am what? African. Thank you. <laughs> and when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions verse 5 but unto Anna he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah but the Lord had shut up her womb when God loves you God will cause you pain come on come on you're teaching good you're teaching good I'm about to really preach now Let's go! Hallelujah! I said I'm about to preach now. Maybe this is for overflow, I think. Listen to me. When God loves you, He will be responsible for your pain. Amen. Hannah did not ask to be loved. This is why sometimes you don't understand. Why is it that people who are wicked seem to prosper more than me? Who is giving to God, worshipping God? I think I'm talking to the wrong you're church. Talking, you're, talk, come on, you're talking to us, Papa. Father, I am giving, I am sacrificing, I am praying all night, I'm praying every watch, I am doing everything I can do, I am living for you. But why are my enemies prospering? And everything I am doing seems to not go forward. Something keeps blocking me. Everyone else is productive but me, oh Lord. Me, oh Lord. Why? Why, Lord? Why? I sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Why, Lord? Why? It did not, so, it did not say Satan. You see, many of you, because you don't understand God's ways, you have credited Satan for what you're going through. This is why you keep binding and rejecting and cutting and breaking your prayer. I break, I bind, I stop. No demon is going away. You didn't sit down to say, hmm. You start looking for other strategies to give it to Satan. There must be somebody saying wicked words to me. And then a, a criminal will come and lie to you. They are ancestral altars. Not everyone came from a background of witches. Hello, it's true. Yes. Not every family had an altar. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's true. Some of you, if you trace your families, there was no one that ever bowed to an idol. They may have not known God, but they did not have idol worship. They never sought out spirits. They, not every family has that. There are certain cultures that don't have anything like that. But somebody will come and say, somebody in your blood. <laughs> Witches. Dressed in white with red. That is why you are suffering right now. 
May God deliver us from foolishness. Amen. I said, may God deliver us from foolishness. Amen. May God save us from foolishness. Some of any kind of sense. You hear me? Uh uh, you this I bind this microphone. There must be an altar somewhere. You see, they were blaming me. You're holding down here instead of saying, Father, <laughs> what is going on? They hold the mic. It's okay. Father, forgive them. They don't know. <laughs> Amen. So can you hear me? Yes. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me well. Not everybody came from that background. And the honest truth is this. If you genuinely come to the Lord Jesus, you genuinely give your life to Christ. You repent of your sins. You say, Lord, even the things I don't know of that may be in my family, Lord, I now belong to the family of God. The Bible says you are grafted into the house of Israel. It means generational curses can't even follow you. Amen. Amen. Because when God looks at your descendants, yes. he sees Father Abraham. Amen. He doesn't see your uncle, your aunties, your... They no longer matter because you are part of a different family. Hallelujah. Amen. You may not know it, but you belong to a Jewish family now. Amen. Uh-huh. A hundred percent. We are all children of who? Abraham. Why are you still claiming people? Hey, my family, they were flying on brooms. God is looking at you saying, I don't remember Abraham flying on a broom. <laughs> Father, help us. It's crazy. <laughs> Every single thing in your life, when you are in Christ Jesus, I will cost you pain. When you know, you see, this is why it is important to always pray. Father, show me your ancient ways. Because God, I call him Jehovah old school. He has never changed. He can't change. That is a name. I don't know why people never gave him that name, especially in our time. People, you know, call him ancient of days. That means Jehovah old school. He's just stuck in his ways. He will never change them. He will never update them. That's just who he is. So, Hannah is loved. Hannah has grace. But God says, no, I'm going to shut your womb. You will not be productive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Verse 6. And her adversaries also provoked her sore. For to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. Even your enemies, they are a reminder to you that God is responsible for your pain. Wow. But you think they are mocking God, but they are there to regurgitate what is obvious about you. Wow, you're teaching good. They will say, where is your God? Come on. But it is a reminder to you that those things that are happening to you, yes. it is because of God. But you misinterpret it because you are not understanding what is happening spiritually. Mm. You think in your mind, you think in your heart, that look at them, they are just provoking me. They are just fighting me. Lord, look at what they are saying about you. God is saying what they are saying is true. I'm responsible. They ain't lying. Mm-hmm. I did that. <laughs> so even her enemies knew it was God that shut her womb. But they provoked her. You see, when you're in pain, it is something provoking you. But what is it provoking you to? There is an end goal that God is trying to achieve in you, through you, and by you. So yes. when God is causing you, see... 
When they pinch you, you resist. You keep, at some point you will shout what? Ow. Stop it. <laughs> you get a reaction. I don't care how hardcore you are. At some point you'll be like, mm, no. So her friends started poking at her. Messing with her. To make her enter into distress. Verse 7. Mm. Verse 7, please. Father, forgive them. I don't know what happened to them. Read for me verse 7. Okay, there we go. And as he did so yearly, by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Imagine you're in the presence of God. There is a voice in your ear, failure, failure, failure. And they waited, not only did they do it at home, but they did it in the presence of God. Sometimes when you come to church and you want to lift your hands and say, Lord, you are worthy. That bill is screaming behind you. That mortgage is saying, how are you going to pay it? Huh? You want to keep worshiping? Or you're going to worship and the doctor report is, mm, keep it up. Look, so either you're going to lean into what is being pushed by you or pushed to you or you're going to understand what God is trying to get out of you. So in the presence of God, she was in so much pain and distress that she did not even eat. She just cries the whole time. Let me tell you something. Tears don't move God. If tears moved God, you would be a billionaire now. Amen. Sure. I'm just seeing some people. It's true. If you could cash in on tears, ah. <laughs> World poverty hunger would have ended. In Africa, we have professional mourners, people who don't know you. <laughs> but during a funeral, you pay them. When they come to your house, they will cry like they knew you. They even have dances. Eh? <laughs> eh? You ask them, you ask them, do, do you know the person? Mm -mm. <laughs> they will roll on the ground. Eh? Tears pouring, buckets of tears. And after the funeral, like, okay, good, okay, thank you. If you ever need us, here's our card. <laughs> it's deep. Verse 8. <laughs> then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am, am not I better to thee than ten sons? Even the husband now started being affected. Saying, listen, is it not just about me and you? Does he have to have children involved? Am I not better than having ten sons? Now you're starting to affect me. You see, when you don't know how to use pain you will start affecting the people around you. Amen, that's good. Teach it. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go and preach in the overflow. You're going to start actually affecting people around you. You have a beautiful face. You have a handsome face. When you smile at people, instead of the, of the presence, the joy of God coming into people, they look... Then you're in church. I exalt. Amen. <laughs> yeah. 
you start affecting people around you because instead of using it the way God wants you to use it, you still don't understand it. So you are using it to afflict pain to others. Jesus, under the stress of the cross, under the pain of the cross, he never burdened anybody else with what he had. That's true. That's good. Because Jesus understood the outlet. When he became too much, he went on his knees to pray. He understood how to control this thing. Yeah, help him. We are going somewhere. Verse 9. Verse 9. So Anna rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. Verse 10. And she went, she was in bitterness of the soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept so. You see, instead of crying for your pain, God wants you to take all that energy. You see, emotion, let me teach you something very profound, not only about the anointing, but about the power of God. Jesus. Every time you are in extreme emotions, your spirit is open because your entire being is cooperating. When you are extremely happy, you can release the power of God. And when you are extremely in anger, you can also release the power of God. When you are in extreme pain, you can release something from God. Why? Because all extremes are a sign of faith. Wow. Teaching good. Wow. Because at that moment, listen to what the Lord Jesus said. The Lord Jesus said this. The Lord Jesus said this. If any man will speak unto this mountain... And does not doubt in his heart. Everything that this person says, it will come to pass. He did not put conditions if they have worshipped enough. He just said whatever they will say in their heart and doubt not, it will come to pass. When Jesus went to a tree, he was hungry. He saw green leaves. And he saw a fig tree. Say, all right, I'm gonna eat some figs today. And he got to the the Bible even tells you it was not the season for figs. Jesus gets there and finds no fig. Jesus feels insulted. I came to you and you have no fruits. You see, this is how God expects it to be. His appearance means there must be fruits. So Jesus comes and finds no fruits. Jesus is like, I, God, came to you. You have no fruits. No one will eat from you. And he turned and left. Even his disciples were like, what in the world is going on? The next day they pass by the same place. The tree is dead. Then they look at the Lord. They say, Lord, look, the tree you cursed is dead. Jesus said, oh, that's no big deal. Anyone who looks at this mountain and does not doubt in his heart, whatever he says, it will happen. He can say, drop yourself in the ocean. And the tree will say, yes, sir, and go. (laughs) So faith, faith is having no objection within you. Amen. Amen. No, somebody didn't get it. If there is no conviction, it doesn't matter if you believe it will not happen. In you, that whole thing must be seen possible. She went before God. Her husband said, am I not better than 10 sons? You're not eating, you're not drinking now. She said, okay, I'm going to eat. She made sure there is peace in the Middle East. She ate. (laughs) Why are you people laughing? What's the problem? They ate. There was calm at home. 
And she waited for everybody to relax and rest. She got out and went privately to seek God. The reason why you're not using your pain wisely is when you're in pain, you want the whole world to know. Instead of God knowing in secret. Come on, your teacher so good. I feel like I'm talking to the wrong people. Teacher, sir. When you are in pain, it is a call for you to pour your heart to God one-on-one. -on -one. It has nothing to do with other people. Because no one will give you deliverance except God. Amen. No one will give you a solution except God. Amen. No one will give you restoration except God. Yes. No one will give you restitution except God. Yes. When you do things for men, you have received your reward. Too rich so whenever you are in pain whenever there is hurt it is a call don't let anybody know because the moment you share it with people before you go before God you just wasted the opportunity uh, I, you see one of the worst things that we have misused social media, especially as spiritual people. We have become so carnal. In that anything that happens to you, I'm going to just go and write a status. Ninjas ain't loyal. But I'm going to be all right. So that people can comment and say, oh, yeah, you know, they're always like that. So that they can sympathize with you. You want people to sympathize with you, but you don't want solutions from God. You don't want God to come and... They're robbing. You They're rather good. have Shanaynes and Karens and, and Jones and Roberts to come to you and say, I feel your pain. Then you feel like you have allies, but you have no solution. Listen, I don't need anyone to agree with me. I just want God to give me solutions. Amen. 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 I desire an answer from God. Amen. I desire comfort from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I desire God to hold me up. I don't want people to hold me up. They may hold me for one minute. They may just call me and say, oh, it's going to be all right. But tomorrow I'm still crying in my, on my pillow by myself. Ah. Even the devil knows if I want to attack you, let me just go and read your status. Let me just scroll. I know within a week, I will know exactly where to attack this person. Ah, oh, Gotcha. Oh, you didn't know Satan reads social media. He does. <laughs> oh, no, he does. Oh, I... <laughs> One day I will teach you about the seed of the serpent. Some of you, you don't even know that a neighbor of yours may be not even human living next door to you. And you see them saying, hi, hey, God bless you. And they're not even men. <laughs> now, what I'm telling you is true. This is why some of these laws that these people are passing, you're like, who in their right mind? A normal parent would pass a law like, no, the person who did that is either completely demonized or it's not even a man. Ah, there is strange things in the world, big time. Some of them, we just look at them, we're like, hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Those tears that you're crying instead of bumping and break my heart. <laughs> take all that energy, take it to God. God is waiting because the moment your heart is sincere, you see, whatever extreme you're in, it is sincerity. That's good. I am so hurt. I am so happy. I am in so much pain. It's all sincere. It is honest. Being angry, being in pain, it's not a sin. That's why the Bible says, in your anger, 
sin not. It means being angry is a normal emotion. Even God gets angry. But what God doesn't want you is to have the spirit of anger because now it's a demon. Because when a demon of anger enters you, you rage. It's good. Every little thing you start throwing chairs, chairs, kicking doors and doing kung fu. And then you come back to yourself. What have I done? Tomorrow you do it again. What have I continued to do? Because something takes you over, it's a demon. But notice that demon even knows the best time to express myself is when they are triggered, I can show up. Yeah, that's good. They need your full cooperation, even evil ones. That's good. Yes. That's good. You're teaching. So she took all her pain, all her pain. She went on her knees. And began to cry before God. She began to weep before God. Lord, people have laughed at me. People have done this. I have no answer to them. But you are my response. You are the one who can vindic vindicate me. Began to cry before God. Took all that. Took it before God. When Jesus was so heavy or burdened with the cross, he asked his disciples to help him to pray, but his disciples fell asleep. Jesus went and knelt before his father. He was sweating blood. Do you know what kind of blood pressure you must have? That your very sweat is now drops of blood. Just by emotional stress, Jesus was already dead. Blood. He's sweating blood, not sweat anymore. That is extreme, extreme stress. But the more he cried before God, angels came and comforted him. He went back to see his prayer warriors. They were asleep. He said, guys, you could not even watch and pray with me even for an hour. The reason why you're not pushed to pray is because you have no pain. The reason why you don't spend hours in prayer is because you have no pain. This is why God also is allowing things to continue to spiral in a direction that he will force you. Amen. To learn to go to him and kneel down. Yes. Amen. That's good. You go to your best friend and realize they cannot help you. Amen. You go to your brother and sister and realize that they can't even pray with you. Yes. Amen. God will make you see clearly that even those who love you on this one, they can't help you. You need to go to God. You must go to God. Your afflictions, your afflictions are meant to strengthen your zeal for God. They are meant to strengthen your commitment to God. They are supposed to enforce your faith in God. Because you realize I put my trust in my father, they failed me. I put it in my mother, they failed me. I put it in my brothers and sisters, they failed me. I put it in all these people. Nothing ever came out of it. You know what? There is only one that I can try. Amen. That Amen. I can trust. Amen. Is I need to rely. Let me try Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And give him everything. Because if anybody who truly understands me, it will be him. It pushes you to that corner whereby it's either God or God. I have tried everything. It's not working. So all her tears that she used to cry and, and not eat, notice she changed her way. She ate. She did what she needed to do, but she was like, you know what? I am going to go to God and pray when nobody is even watching me. I'm going to go and cry before God. So she went before God and opened her heart and began to pray sincerely and truthfully.
You see, when groaning and travailing begins to happen in prayer, your promised child is about to come forth. Amen. Amen. That's good. I'm talking to the wrong people, Amen. maybe. When the tears and pain, you are praying, you get to that place of groaning. Do you know what? You know when we were children, we used to cry until you, you still have withdrawals from crying. <laughs> that means you cried with all your heart. Until every fiber of your being cries, that when you stop, your body is still in shock. <laughs> Did we really stop crying? <laughs> Even your heartbeat is interrupted, your breathing is everything. <laughs> every part of you begins to break down. That's how Hannah cried before God, poured everything. You see, until you learn to pour everything out, God cannot fill you with new things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you are in pain, it's a time to completely clean house. Yeah. Amen. To take out the old so that God can give you something new. Amen. Yeah. It is at that moment. It is at that hour that everything in you, no more strength in you because you have let go of absolutely everything. Everything, listen to me, everything has been completely poured out. Everything, not some things, everything. You see, you cannot make room. The Bible says, I will pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. God wants you to make room anyway. Because God's goal is not to bless you that you can't receive it. So God will make sure that you let go of those things. So she began by, you know what? Me not eating, me not drinking does not solve anything. Some of you, you need to start taking care of yourself because neglecting yourself is not solving anything. Amen. Ah, you can clap your hands. How do you expect God to bless you but you forgot how to be in shape? You forgot how to be healthy? You forgot how to do all these things. You just let go of yourself. You know what? I'm going to heaven anyway. <laughs> when people see you, they are even... Uh, I'm not sure I want your God. It's true. They look at your lips crusty like the Grand Canyon. It's, then they look at you as Shanda. But no, no, no. Jesus said, make sure you lotion, you, you clean yourself, you anoint yourself. Right. You look good that nobody even knows that you're fasting, you're in pain. Some of you, you, are, you don't understand. You are messing up your own prayer. Because anytime you want to do something for God. Hey. I'm not talking right. I'm just fasting, you know. You just gave it away. You already got your reward. God is like, all right. What else is there to give you? You wanted people to, uh, to see you, so there you go. They saw you. <laughs> Gabriel looks at Papa God and says, Papa God, this, oh, we are tired of this one. You are messing up your prayer because every time you are in pain, instead of it pushing you fully to the Lord, it's pushing you to people. Yet you're not learning that the same people are the same ones that will crucify you, disappoint you, turn against you. Yeah. 
every time God uses me to do supernatural things, I realize that some people actually will not appreciate it because they are misusing their pain. Somebody will be delivered, they will say they are actors. Somebody will be receiving a word from God. Oh, they gave out scripts. Do you know why? Just because somebody else lied to them. They never went to God. I saw something really funny today. I saw something really funny. And this person had posted a video. As you know, I was just on TikTok minding my business. <laughs> and then this video showed up. And this is how the person started. You know, God told me, you know, years ago, God told me to get out of the church and... And, you know, I didn't know why, but now I realize that, you know, all forms of spirituality is just good. No, God did not tell you to leave the church. A demon did. A devil did. How dare you compare Christianity to voodoo? Are you something wrong with you? You take God and you compare him to other things. But you see, they do that because they are rebellious people. Somebody bruised them, but they are ashamed to say it. So they'll say, God told me to get out of the church. Do you know what the Bible says? So you hear them say, oh, you don't need to be in church. Wrong. The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the righteous. Amen. But all these things is because one person hurt me. Instead of me not putting my faith in people. Yes. Let me put it in God. You are going to church seeking people who will say, oh, I love you so much. Oh, wow. So you can feel so. <laughs> Andre, you're such a... Wow, don't worry. We just are full of love. <laughs> That's what many of you are looking for. <laughs> if they tell you, lift your hands and pray, Kapaya. Wow, it's so aggressive. There's just no, no love. <laughs> you want emotion, not solution. Ah, so good. When I go to church, my first thing is I want to find the presence of God. Yes. Not find people who smile at me. I don't care. Yeah. I want God to answer me. If there are beautiful people and the presence of God is there, even better. But whether they smile at me, they are, I don't care. Lord Jesus, are you going to meet me there? Yes, you are there. That's what matters to me. Amen. Amen. I didn't come to church to, for anybody. Amen. I came for him. Amen. That's what I went. I, I came for him. I didn't come for anybody else. This is why I always pray, even in the beginning of service, I always say, Father, ah, I am just dust. Let these people not look to me. When God begins to manifest and things start happening, I always tell them, and I always tell you, guys, don't forget, this is about Jesus. If you come here as a fan of me, you're losing out. That's good. Look to Jesus because he's the one who gave you the blessing and he's the only one who will help you to maintain it, not me. Amen. That's good. Keep your eyes on the master, not me. Amen. Verse 11. Verse 11. And she vowed a vow. You see, when you groan in the spirit, you begin to mature. Yes. You start understanding that God is a God who is a businessman. He loves deals. Mm. God loves transactions. Yeah. God wants you to get to a place where you can make a vow with him. You can sit down and make a deal with him. Amen. That is a secret many of you don't know about God. You do it loosely because you have never truly been in pain. You only evoke this power or invoke this power when you are in so much danger and you want to be bailed out. God, if you do this, I'll be in church every day. Well, that doesn't benefit God. God, if you heal me, I promise you, I'm going to pray every day. God doesn't need, whether you pray or not, it doesn't change him. 
But this woman began now to understand that I have been complaining. God didn't answer my complaint. I have been crying to people. God did not respond. What does God need? That I can make a deal with him. That I will get what I want and he gets what he wants. This is what spiritual maturity is. If you read chapter 1 of Samuel, it says, In those days, the word of God was very rare. God was, no, there were no, there was no prophecy. There were no open visions. The word of God became rare. It means that if you heard God, it was like, what? It was shocking. So her noticing that every year we go to the temple, but God doesn't have a genuine servant. Even the sons of Eli are messed up now. She started making a deal with God in her pain. Listen to what she said. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaiden and remember me and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thy handmaiden a child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Notice he said, me, Lord, you give me a child. I will give you that child for the rest of his life. Notice she's already deciding the life of Samuel by force. Right. That's good. She realized that she has a spiritual obligation, Amen. spiritual authority, yeah. even on her... Amen. Come on. Even on her, of her children, that she can take the life of her children and give it to God. And that child will never escape the presence of God. She understood her spiritual obligation. She said, Lord, if you look at me with mercy and remember me, you give me a child. If you not forget me and give me a child, she did not say if. She said, and give me a child. This is what I will do. I will take that child and I will give him back to you. And that child will serve you all the days of his life. He will be yours. And as a sign, he will never even cut his hair. He will be a Nazarite to you. I am giving him to you. So you see, even the Nazarene covenant, mm -hmm. Hannah is making it not because God said. Yeah, yeah. She's creating something that others came later. Yeah. That God even adapted the same thing. Uh, I'm giving you a boy. You call him Samson. Don't cut his hair. How did she know? Wow. Wow. Abraham was the first man that came and said, I will give you a tenth from now. God started requiring it from everybody. Because what Anna was doing was by divine revelation. Verse 12, look at this. I promise I'm finishing. I don't know where the worship ninjas are. I'm waiting on them. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Eli began to look at her mouth. You see, when you sincerely pray, prophets are, begin are sent to you. Amen. Amen. A prophet will be sent to you. Amen. To confirm that God indeed heard you. Amen. Hallelujah. I thought somebody was on easy street. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Notice the duty of the prophet wasn't even, can I prophesy? It wasn't that. He was to go and tell her, hey, it is done. Go home. Let me teach you something about prayer that is powerful. 
Don't pray until you say amen. Pray until inside of you, you feel that note of victory. You start getting, you are in pain. But all of a sudden you start feeling like, amen. why am I getting happy? Amen. Oh, That's it good. is done. God just spoke to me. Amen. Your heart will start responding, jumping. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, God just said it is done. Amen. You get up, you clap your hands, you say thank you, Jesus, and you go home. Hallelujah. If you have never arrived in that place, you have not prayed. Mm. If you have never gotten to that place, you have not prayed. There must be victory within your spirit. You just start, you are crying and all of a sudden, ha, 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 ha. I shouldn't be laughing. Ha, ha, ha. Why am I so happy right now? You know something in your spirit Amen. has been delivered. Amen. Something in you has been released. Yes. Yeah. Something has been given to you. Yeah. I prophesy to somebody listening to my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are about to give birth to the promise. I receive. You are about to receive the promise. I receive. You are receiving the promise. See. Lift up your hands and begin to cry to God. Begin to speak to God. Receive the promise. Lift up your voice to Him. Receive the promise. I am ready to give birth to the promise, Lord Jesus. I receive the promise. I receive my promise today. I receive, I receive my, my promise, promise, Lord Jesus. I am giving birth to my promise. Today. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Say, Lord, look at your servant. Lord, look at your son. Don't forget your son. Don't forget your son. Don't forget your daughter. Lord, I am your child. Lord, I am your child. Remember me today. Remember me today. Remember me today. Remember me today. For your own kingdom. For your own kingdom. For your own benefit oh Lord benefit, oh when Lord. you give it to me when you give it to me I will give it back to you lift up your voice and begin to cry to God remember me this day Lord Jesus don't forget about me don't forget about your son today remember me this day Lord let that thing in me may it be for your children Lift up your voice. 
voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Cry to God. Cry to God. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen to me. Listen to me. Pour everything to God. The reason why you can receive a prophetic word and nothing manifests is because when you pray, you just want to receive. But you have not emptied those things that are still there. Prayer is designed for you to release your heart to God. The purpose of prayer is that when you lift and you stand before God, you let Jesus said, cast your burdens unto me. It means by the time you say amen, God must have the ability to give you something new. Yes. But if you pray and you leave church and you are still carrying the burdens, then you did not pray. Don't blame it all. The church didn't have the anointing. It's you. The anointing will not take burdens from you. The anointing is designed to give you power for yokes to break. But the burden of your heart is you. It is your responsibility. Jesus cannot even enter your heart unless you open it. But if inside of your heart, there is heartbreak, there is disappointment, this person said this about me, and you're not letting things go, where will Jesus come into? Amen. Do you want answers for those prayers? Yes. Or do you want to carry the burdens of those people who right now they may be asleep? Not even caring about you, but you're busy complaining about them. They are not even thinking about you. What is better? Learn to travel in prayer. That by the time you say amen, you say, I never wasted my time. I gave everything to God. Amen, amen. Your clapping says you're not even ready. Lift your hands to God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I open my heart, Lord. I open my heart, Lord. Father, today. Father, today. Look upon me with mercy. Look upon me with mercy. As I cry to you. As I cry to you. By reason of my pain. By reason of my pain. Father, remember me. 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 For your name's sake. For your name. For your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, remember me. Father, remember me. Father, remember me. Father, remember me. For your name, for your glory, for your glory, for your glory, for your presence of my enemy. Remember me. Remember me. In the presence of my enemy. Pray to God. Pray to God. In the presence of my God. Your glory to me. Remember me in the presence of my enemy. Remember me in the presence of confusion. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Listen to me. There are angels ready to carry out God's assignment over your life. Amen. The louder the amen, the greater the miracle. Amen. amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. God specializes in the impossible. Yes. Yes. 
Touch your neighbor, say God specializes in the impossible. God specializes in the impossible. The moment you think it is impossible, the moment you think it is impossible, that is what God is seeking. That is what God is seeking. Because He wants to show you. Because He wants to show you that He is God. That He is God. And He is more than capable. And He is more than capable. He is more than able. He is more than able to do the impossible. To do the impossible. Listen to me. I want you to use now your prayer before God. What you have been believing God for. Make a vow before God. You see, James said something very important. He said that you pray and you don't receive because you pray amiss. Because you desire to spend what you receive in your own selfish desires. Meaning you want to be blessed only for you. Not for the kingdom of God, not for the purpose of God, not for those who may need help. You are only thinking about you. If you have selfishness within your prayer, God shall not answer you. Listen to me and listen to me well. God will not answer you. Lord, I just want to prophesy why. Are you going to spend nights praying for people and I tell you to pray for them? Will you go to a place even if it will cost you your life? Will you do it? A lot of you, you say yes now. But when it comes, you never sat down to really be like, you know what? Father, I am not only giving you what you are giving me, but I am giving you my life in the process. You have to understand that God can see beyond what your words are saying. Some of you, yes, God wants to bless you. There is no human being on earth that God doesn't want to bless. There is no human being on earth that God doesn't want to increase. There is no human being on earth that God doesn't want to prosper. God wants to do a magnificent work in each and every one of us. But when God looks at you, can he carry out his assignment through you? Will you carry out his assignment when everybody else is rejecting to do it? Can God count on you? This is the big question. This is the biggest question that when God looks at us, he's asking. Yes, you've been asking me for this, I will give you. But when I give you, will you run from me or will you run to me? Yeah. Will you be for me or will you be against me? What are you going to, are you really going to give me everything? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you be able to stand before God and say genuinely, God, I'm giving you everything. Not just me, but what you give me, I will use it for your glory. Whatever you, whenever you demand it, I will lend it. I'm ready to give it. Many of you, whenever God demands it, you start saying, but I have this, but I have that, I have to do this. This is why you even struggle to give to God. And that's why you're also struggling financially. So why should God give you more when he asks you to use what he has given you? Knowing that God has the ability to give you more than that. Are you listening to me? Yes. yes. How will God know that what I give you, you can give it back to me if I need it? Yeah. Abraham asked for a son. God gave it to him. Then God said, give him to me. If Abraham did not pass that test, Abraham would have never been the father of nations. Isaac would have not carried the ability to glorify God and his father Abraham. God would have found another family to use. So God questioned him. Ah, give me your boy. He just he didn't even tell his son. He said, My son, follow me. We're going to go offer God's sacrifice, not knowing that he's the sacrifice. 
When God looks at you, say, Father, bless me financially. If God comes and tells you, ah, my house has a need. Will you start being the one that says, oh, I want to see what you're using it for? Or will you just do what God wants you to do? Amen, that's good. I have never given to any person or anyone to question them what they are doing. I'm not saying don't ask. If you want, that's you. But then you never give. Mm. You know what, mom? This is only in America we have seen these things. Is it not? Yes, that's true. And the people who usually don't give anything are the ones that are usually problematic. Right. I want you to speak to God and tell God, Lord, truly and truthfully, whatsoever you give me this thing that i'm praying for i want children when you give me my kid when you give me my first child he's yours oh, yeah. i would tell him that this one you you are god's servant whether you like it or not i will raise him like that and i'll give him to you lord if you prosper my business i tell you there will be no need in your house that i will not cover amen, amen. then god looks at you and says ah you i trust you amen i trust you that I can give you things and I know that I will not lose you. You see, God is afraid that when he blesses you, you will run from him. The children of Israel suffered for years. The moment they got into the land flowing with milk and honey, ah, they forgot God. They start adapting other things because they never made a vow to God. They were not genuine. They just wanted to be free. Don't just pray for freedom, but be committed to the God who gives you freedom. Amen. That's good. I think you can clap your hands better. Amen. Lift your hands to him. I want you to make a genuine prayer before God and say, Father, when you bless me, when you increase me, when you heal me, when you deliver me, I am giving you everything. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, when you Father, bless, when me, you bless Jesus, me, I am giving you Father, everything. Father, when you bless me, Father, when you bless my family, I am giving it back I am to giving you, oh God. Everything.
shall receive total restoration and healing. Lift up your hands and begin to tell God, restore me. Restore, restore me, Father. Restore me. Restore, restore me, Father. From heaven to hell, Lord Jesus, total restoration, total restoration. Say you shall live and you shall not die. You shall live and you shall not die. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it. I shall live and not die. My children shall live and not die. Listen to me. You are in the right place. Amen. Amen. I said you are in the right place. Hallelujah. I said you are in the right place. Amen. Whether you are watching from home, you are in the right place. Amen. You may not be here in the flesh, but you are here in the spirit. Yeah. Because we are one body in Christ. Our God is a good God. What I love about Jehovah, He knows all, He sees all. No one can be sneaky where He is because He is everywhere. I love what Jonah said. He said, even if I make my bed in hell, you are there also. Glory be to His holy name. Glory be to His holy name. I say glory be to his holy name. Glory be to his holy name. Prophecy to one is prophecy to what? Oh. oh. Amen. Your duty is to understand that if Jesus is speaking to one person, he's also speaking to me. Amen. I am not the deliverer. I am not the savior. I have never healed anyone. 
I have never saved anyone. I have never delivered anyone. It is Jesus that is doing that. Amen. I am just an instrument that he's using. Amen. So don't, don't look and say, when prophet touches me, yes. But how much better is it when the Holy Spirit touches me? Amen. You are where the Holy Spirit is. Amen. Your amen is too small. Amen. I said you are where the Holy Spirit is. Amen. Overflow, you are where the Holy Spirit is. Amen. Even those who are watching at home, you are where the Holy Spirit is. Amen. Say, Father, we declare victory. Victory. Over everyone that we have brought in your presence. Over everyone that we have brought in your presence. Your children. Your children. That are represented here. That are represented here. We declare victory. We declare victory. Over sickness. Over sickness. Over shortcomings. Over shortcomings. Over limitations. Over limitations. Addictions. Addictions. Those whom we have brought in your presence. Those whom we have brought in your presence. Father, you know them. Father, you know them. We declare victory. We declare victory. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. Our families are healed. Our families are healed. Our children are delivered. Our children are Our future is secure. Our future is secure. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe this, shall glory. Listen to me. Listen to me. It is done for you. I said it is done for you. 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 In the name of Jesus. your thinking pattern will change and your utterances will change. Even when it's obviously not working, we will not say it. Because the devil wants to get you to say it so that you accept and agree with him. The Greek word is homologia. When you speak, you are speaking in agreement. The demon comes to whisper to your head, you won't succeed. 
this project won't work. It won't work. It must work. Because the world was created in six days. The fastest way to get to your desired destiny is by speaking. And number three, because of our time, it says when you speak in Joshua 1 8, it says observe to do. Don't just speak. When you speak, it said observe to do. In Acts chapter 1, verse 1, it says of all that Jesus both began to do and to teach. We don't only talk, it's a profession. We say and we do. If you begin to speak and do, your destiny and your life will literally keep being catapulted to greater realms of glory. When you say you are a national prophet, then begin to pray and study. That's what prophets do. When you say you are an evangelist, begin to go out to win souls. When you say you are an academician, begin to read books and pass exams. Don't just speak and sit down. When you say you are a business merchant, begin to invest. Even if it's 100 cities, invest it. Don't just speak. Speak and do. When you can do these three things, you will transit from glory to glory. Whether the devil likes it or not. Now we have five minutes. Ale, alleluia. Ale, alleluia. Ale, alleluia. Stand up and begin to walk. If you couldn't lift any part of your body, begin to lift it. I command pains to go now. Pains, go. I command ligaments, bones, receive strength. I command growth now, vanish, dematerialize. In the name of Jesus, every unwanted growth, I command you now, be gone. Growth in the breast. Growth in the chest, growth in the tummy, growth on the chin, growth in the neck. In the name of Jesus, get out. I command ears, open, eyes, begin to see. Begin to see, ears, begin to hear. Begin to hear. In the name of Jesus, I command pains, arthritis pains, be gone. Ale. Ale. We were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website, orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.